says they're bombing them. Is it a real alliance with Iran we've got right now? What do you think is going on, Frank? I, I think that Netanyahu needs to come to New York. And speaking as a New Yorker, growing up as a Christian as yourself, you got to respect Israel. We're all Judeo-Christians in that regard, and some people just don't understand that. They just don't get it. You look at Israel. Just think of the, the, the logic behind this. They are a small country, and they are surrounded by everybody that hates them. So you look at BB. He's going to come to New York. He's going to he's going to he's, he's going to go. And he's 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 going to come to New York. He's going to say what he he's going to say in front of the UN like he has in the past. He's going to go and he's going to go up in front of Congress and the Kabuki theater that you were talking about between the Democrats and the Republicans. What do the Democrats have to hide? You get Pelosi getting up there. She doesn't want. BB to speak. Why? The Democrats don't want BB to speak because Obama isn't doing a damn thing and picking a side and standing up for Israel. He's not even calling the Islamic terrorists Islamic. So when you look at what side are you on as an American, is your blood red like the rest of us? Well, yeah, I don't get it. So BB, yes, he has a right to get there. He has a right to stand up and he has to say, look, this is what's going on. With your permission or without your permission, Israel as a sovereign nation has to stand up for itself. And if we've got to fire one off at Iran, so be it. Well, I've already said Israel's a sovereign nation, and that's what Rand Paul and everybody have said. If they want to attack uh, Iran, that's their issue. My question is, why is Benjamin Netanyahu doing this now? Is it political, or do they really think Iran's getting ready to use a nuke? Because that'll make Iran look like victims if Israel strikes Iran. I don't think that's how it's going to happen. They're, like you said, there's going to be a flag. There's going to be some something that's going to happen. Like you said, Iran has nukes. If, if Iran's had them for a long time, and I'm a firm believer in that, because nobody was scared of, the, of our guys being over there when we were in Iraq with our full forces than I was thinking, oh, crap, what would happen? If, excuse if I said that on the air. What would happen if, what would happen if Iran decided to unload on our boys while we're in Iraq? So, so you were over right. in Iraq in the military, you're saying... No, no, no. no you, I you're saying there. you were concerned if, if, if Iran decided to... Well, no, that was the word from the people over in Iraq was that Iran had nukes up on the border. And, I mean, we know Saudi Arabia's got them now. They're proliferating everywhere. Um, but, I mean, look at the lesson of North Korea. Nobody will attack them now, even though they really deserve it with all the provocations they do, because they've got nukes. I think that's the lesson Iran's going with. Let me ask you this. What do you think's going on behind the scenes? Because you've got Israel trying to knock Iran out by backing bad groups in Syria. I think that's very bad. But all these other governments did it too. So Israel kind of went along with that. Uh, Saudi Arabia is in the middle of it. And, and, and then now, I mean, who's who? You can't even tell what's going on. There's a lot of confusion there. And, there's, there, there's, and, and listen, if you believe in the end times, obviously you're going to say there's going to be a lot of confusion and people are going to wonder what to believe. Wars and rumors of I wars. I, I, exactly. I, this is what I believe. I believe that Israel has some hard information, and I think that he's coming here to say, hey, we stand with you. You're supposed to stand. Well, they're our best friend over there. They're the smallest, but they're our best friend over there. If they've got to take their gloves off, so be it. Although I've heard some say that you know, Netanyahu doesn't have the stones to, to do that, and that's why he has a lot of opposition right now. But I think the timing is right. I think the timing Well, that's right true. Is Netanyahu is getting opposition from groups that think he should have already hit Iran. There you go. And, and coming here is the right time. And it's the right time because he needs to stand up. And this is why I'm glad the Republicans have, have stood with him and say, hey, we unconventionally we, we're bringing you here to stand up and speak your mind because you have to. Because what's going to go on besides our idiot Congress that can't get out of their own way? The world is going to be going sure, on. Sure, sure, sure. What about this problem? There's some bullying going on by total pro-Israel groups. Uh, on the internet, if you don't agree with everything Israel's doing, that then backfires and gives support to the super anti-Israel groups that run around bullying even worse. Uh, and are just, I mean, it, I am just, I, I think anti-Israel sentiment is growing. Do you agree with that? I've seen it a lot, and I'm a New Yorker. so it's, Sure, so what do you, you think's know, behind that? I mean, Israel's not the center of the world. Why are people so obsessed with it? I think it becomes just a political diversion I mean, here's an example. Radical Islamists have killed about 300,000 people in Libya and Syria in the last couple of years. No one talks about them. But when Israel kills like 20 people in a bombing raid, it's like the end of the world. All I'm saying is it becomes a distraction. Everybody knows what Israel does. No one else is guilty of anything. That's, that's all I'm pointing out. I appreciate your call.
And, and we're going to get Dr. Pachetic's take on it. I know he's listening right now. He's a big critic of Israel. He's Jewish. We'll get his take. We got Mike. And we got Mo. We got AD. We got Scott. We're going to all of you straight ahead. Um, okay, so Syria, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and Israel, and ISIS are all connected. Part of the reason why they've been doing a slow burn in Syria is because Syria has a strategic alliance with Iran, and Israel cannot strike Iran until Syria is neutralized. I know. So they backed al-Qaeda along with the West to take out the country, which is incredibly immoral and wrong. So when they sit back and they say Obama's done nothing to support Israel, that's not true. This whole grinding with ISIS in Syria has been to wear Syria down so that its ability to respond when Israel attacks Iran is negated. That's been the whole point. No, the I totally time. agree, and I like how you bowled it down simply when I babbled about it for an hour. The question is, what's the background now? What's your take on the real power alliances now? Is there a real double cross of Iran? Is, is Obama going to double cross Iran? Or is Israel mad or BB mad that Obama has double crossed them and is in an alliance with Iran? I think Israel has been terrified of the concept of Iran getting a nuclear weapon since they started suggesting they were trying to do it. And that's why all of this stuff that we've watched kick off with Syria has happened. This has just been a long, slow process because we couldn't directly go in and start bombing Syria. So we had to do it through a proxy third party. So it's been a long time. And so process. now Israel has to act like the U.S. isn't involved to give us cover when Israel does it. Correct. And I'd like you to pose that to Pachenik because I'd like to see what his response is to that as well. Well, I wanted to war game all this out. And I think what you just said crystallized everything. Do what I can. What else do you have to say about this, Mike? Um, I, it's a mess. That's about all I can say about it. I, I see a lot of um, hubbub going on about, you know, I, I, I look at like ISIS going after Christians all of a sudden. I mean, these guys have never been, they may not like Christians, but they've never been diehard. We're going to go get Rome. I mean, where did that come from? And I think that was really to spur people on here to get people in the United States and in the West and sensed that, oh, we have to go get them. They've left Israel alone. Syria borders Israel. They share a border with Israel. You haven't heard anything about ISIS attacking Israel. Well, it's clear so, that the leadership of ISIS is completely run by the West. As best you can tell, who do you think is quarterbacking the ISIS boys? No idea, to be honest with you. It's too mucky for me to call that one. Well, we but know. It's I mean, it's we know. It's it's a fact. It's it's uh, it's the Turks, NATO, the Saudi Arabians with the money, and Israel is is helping with their uh, Arab agents as well. The question is, how can Israel trust Al Qaeda to do things like this? It's. I don't, I don't know whether they intend on doing that. I think they're just using them. Damascus is in between them and ISIS anyway, so they can be fairly confident that Syria will act as its own buffer to prevent ISIS from storming in. Yes. Um, I know some people that have been uh, over to Turkey recently um, for some... Uh, well, I don't want to get into why, but uh, the Turks are scared of these guys. I, I don't know totally, you know, I don't know how much of that is just a front, but uh, from the people that he was meeting with and their high-level people, um, they're terrified of ISIS. They're really scared of these guys. So, you know, there, there may be contributing factors. They may be helping in some way, shape, or form, you know, logistically or otherwise. But there's, there's some... Well, they're terrified because Turkey, you know, exports wine. And, and they're not, I mean, they're like Islam light. And, and of course... They are, are, are worried about them because they're afraid there could be an Islamic uprising that takes over uh, Turkey as well. So there is some evidence. That's why Saudi Arabia is giving them money and exporting them. They're like, here, you go have your country with our enemy, Iraq, and Syria. You go take them over. Don't take us over. But, but that's like paying off a pirate. That, that's only going to bite them in the butt later. I, I do have one thing, and I don't want to say it on air because I'm in the middle of some sensitive stuff myself. Um, but I do have one thing that I would like to impart to you about whole, the whole Turkey-Syria thing um, that I think is really important. And well, we'll do this. I can't on. talk to you because you're on the network board, but tell John Harmon you can trust him. He'll, he'll relay it to me right now. Appreciate your call. We've got AD in Delaware and a bunch of others, and I'll get to all of you. Because uh, we've only got scows and popping in for like five, six minutes and, and, and Pachenik for, you know, that long. Because I want to just have some guests where they just pop in, pop out with a quick comment. You're going to hear more and more of that on the show. You'll hear the long form guests where they hear 30 minutes an hour, sometimes two hours. If it's, you know, a guest that can cover a bunch of topics. 
Uh, but uh, we're going to get a quick pop-ins from them and see their angles. Because this show isn't about sound bites and repeating it at you to brainwash you. It's about going through the same process we are of wargaming all the angles to really figure out what's happening in the world. Because you'll know the truth and it will set you free.